Morning Superstars. So before we go on to today's shared write, I wanted to share a piece of writing that was sent to me yesterday. I was super impressed. I could see that you'd listened carefully to the shared video and included everything that I asked you to. So Preston, I was super impressed with yours. You were writing all about, is it chefs? So you said, chefs are strange beings from the planet Uranus. The majority of people are scared of these aliens. What do they look like? There are many different types of chefs that vary considerably in size, ranging from a golf ball to a beach ball. Furthermore, their skin tends to be super smooth, also so elastic that bullets bounce off. Amazingly, all chefs possess the ability to suck in their limbs to give them the appearance of a ball. Ooh. So I'm super excited to see where chefs live today. So I'm obviously going to write about mine. So we don't need to write the date necessarily or a learning objective because we're just going to continue this piece of writing. So yesterday I did my title of Thunder Dragons. I wrote a, an introductory sentence. Then I wrote my subheading of what do they look like or appearance. And today I'm going to be going on to habitat where, or where do they live. So you can choose which heading you want. I'm going to go with habitat. And underline it, you hopefully can use a ruler. So still I'm writing about thunder dragons. So I'm going to introduce what I'm writing about again with a capital letter. So I'm going to have Thunder Dragons. On my planning sheet, I said that they exist throughout the world. So obviously I want to include that. So Thunder Dragons exist throughout the world. text that we were using a lot of generalizers and they said that the majority like these people so maybe I'll copy that and magpie that as it so I'm going to use the generali generalizer of the majority which means most so most of them or the majority I wrote on mine that they like to live in mountains so maybe I'm going to edit add extra detail to say where on mountains and maybe at the top of mountains so the majority like to live at the top of mountains. Full stop. I might want to use a different generalise now. I've said the majority, so now I maybe want a few or some. So I might go with some capital letter for the start of my sentence. Remember, I'm writing about thunder dragons, but I don't necessarily want to keep repeating thunder dragons, so I can just move on and say, because I know some is referring to thunder dragons, I can just say some, and I'm going to say prefer. Okay, so the word prefer, meaning what would you prefer to eat, chocolate cake or an apple? Usually a chocolate cake for me. Okay, so it's what is your favourite, okay, what would you rather? So some prefer, I don't want to repeat the word live, I've already used it, I don't want to say the majority like to live, some prefer to live, so I'm going to maybe think or use a thesaurus for an alternative word for live, and I'm going to use the word reside. You might not have heard of that word before, other words might be lodge, or something, so use a thesaurus for word choices so that you don't repeat them. So some prefer to reside, on my planning sheet I said they like to be caves, so I'm gonna say in caves, and that's gonna be my preposition. Okay, and then I don't want to finish my sentence there because it's quite short, so I'm gonna use a conjunction, I'm gonna use the word but. So some prefer to reside in caves, but, and I might use another generalizer, I'm gonna say or this time, meaning all, and I'm talking about thunder dragons, so I can say it this time, but all thunder dragons keep their distance from 
from humans. Now if you've seen my boxing up planning sheet, you might notice that that wasn't on my planning sheet, but that's okay. Because we can't put everything on a planning sheet and ideas come to us as we write. So actually, if they like to live in caves, not many people that I know, okay, or around the world, live in caves. So it might be that they want to keep their distance from humans. So think and use ideas and link them together and add extra detail in. So, so far we've got thunder dragons exist throughout the world. The majority like to live at the top of mountains. Some prefer to reside in caves, but all thunder dragons keep their distance from humans. On my planning sheet, I said about how they also like to fly in the clouds. So, obviously they don't do that when they're sleeping, so that's maybe during the day. So, I might have an ING opener for during the day. And remember, after a sentence opener, I need a comma. So, during the day, thunder dragons... Fly among. Again, that's a new word, so that means in between, okay, or with or alongside. So fly among the clouds. Why might they do that? Okay, I'm thinking that they want to keep their distance from humans. So I might add another conjunction here, as in so sort of explain why. So they fly among the clouds so that they cannot be spotted. And again, full stop, make sure your T's are dotted, your I, your, sorry, your T's are crossed, your I's are dotted, and that you've done your handwriting really neatly that capital letters are clearly not joined to the following letters. So, for my paragraph, I've written about habitat, where they live. I could have said, where do they live, question mark, as a subheading. So, habitat. Thunder dragons exist throughout the world. The majority like to live at the top of mountains. Some prefer to reside in caves, but all thunder dragons keep their distance from humans. During the day, thunder dragons fly among the clouds so that they cannot be spotted. So that's my paragraph. So I would like you to write your paragraph about the creature that you've decided to write about for their habitat or where they live. Don't forget you're going to need a subheading. And I'd like a good amount of sentences. Okay, I've written one, two, three, four. So four or five sentences maybe, but with detail. Think, can I use a sentence opener? Can I be specific? Can I use generalizers? Okay, can I look at my boxing up planning and try and include it and then add extra detail like I did when I said about keeping their distance from humans. So, like I said, I was super impressed with Preston's work from yesterday and I can't wait to see where these chefs live and I can't wait to read some of the others once they're sent in so that I can see what other creatures we've got, what they look like, where they live and then hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to finish our non-chronological report with a the next bit of their hobbies and what they like to do and then also a fascinating fact. But today you're writing one paragraph all about habitat, but make it high quality for me. Can't wait to read it.